Welcome back to the lab folks. So I feel a little lazy today so I'm just going to build a kit. So uh, kit of the month day. Uh, I don't know if it's really a kit of the month thing because I don't usually do one every month. But uh, what do we got here? Okay before we get started with the uh, kit here. Um, if it, the other day, my last video, I did a little review of this. I mean, it's a very quick review but um, what I, one of the things I tried to do is I tried to get it working with my Furnersi iron and it wouldn't supply up to 20 volts, it would, it would go up only up to 12. So it would do 5, 9 or 12 but not the 20. Now I had uh, the switch on, this PDCOM switch and uh, the reason I did have that on is because uh, if you go to section 8.08 .08 of the manual it does suggest that um, if you got QC2 chargers we want to supply power to PD appliances before you switch the PD communication switch to on. So that's what, that's why I had it on. But uh, somebody, a viewer, picked up on this and uh, he suggested that I try turning that off and uh, prevent the, the meter from intercepting that communication and just let it communicate straight through. So that's what we're going to try right now. That's coming from the power supply. And I know it's at five volts, so I'll plug this in here. This is the iron. Turning this off now, then plugging the iron in. And it comes up to 20 volts. That's good. Okay, let's turn the iron on. And yeah, it's supplying three amps at 20 volts. Yeah, so that works. So thanks to that viewer for suggesting that. That is exactly what we needed to do in this case, despite what the documentation says. Okay, let's uh, let's get to this kit. All right, what do we have here? So at least comes with a schematic, which is always a plus. Multifunction electronic clock suite. Principle of operating uses a little microcontroller. Tells you the fuck the key. So yeah, it's, it's nice. It tells you how to use it even. All right. Oh, so, do we have all the parts here? I'm going to assume we do and just proceed with building it. Oh, it looks like you can connect something up. So it, it has an alarm function and you can connect that up to an external device. So it's got the little speaker here. Okay, I have a power supply set up to 5 volts because this looks like a 5 volt device and uh, we'll see if it makes a beep by itself. It does. So this will just be switching on or off uh, to uh, enable the alarm or disable it. So you can connect that to an external device and use this clock to actually run something else. Another comment the other day uh, regarding soldering iron cleaners and whether or not wet is better than dry or I tend to use both methods I was initially brought up with just the wet method and adopted the dry later on but I use both while I'm soldering I find it um, kind of just fit my style of soldering when I when I go on these so I'll, what I'll do is uh, most of the time at least if I put down my wits about me is I'll use this the wet sponge at the end so I'll do like four or five joints and I'll put the iron back on here I'll give it a quick clean with the sponge and I do find the sponge actually provides me with a a, a better quicker clean than uh, what the brass wool or brass foil however you want to say it does but I tend to like if I'm going along like I'm doing an IC or something like that and you're doing a lot of different joints I guess it doesn't really matter with irons like this that return to their working temperature extremely quickly but there is a little bit less uh, thermal shock if you're doing this so a quick clean if not a perfect clean like uh, I, I find I, I get with the wet sponge so that's my story and I'm sticking to it 
So it does, you know, the wet sponge does require a little bit of maintenance, but uh, in my estimation, it, it does a better job of the cleaning. That's why I retain it. Now you're putting in the LEDs, um, the short wire here goes to the negative or to the cathode and the long wire goes to the anode. So putting it in the, with that symbol there like this, that straight line this side over here, that's the cathode and this is the anode. So you'd put in the short wire on this side. Like that. All right, it's all finished. Everything looks to be okay. And a visual inspection here. I guess we can we can peel these things off here. Over uh, overall, it was a fairly easy build. There was a, a lot of soldering to do, so it, it did take forty five minutes. Uh, to do so, set aside uh, an hour for yourself to put this together. And it shouldn't be any problem at all. Other than that, you know, real easy operating voltage is seven to 12 volts. So we put up the voltage to, there we are, eight volts. So it's supposed to show 10, 10, it's showing 70, 70. So do we have something wrong here? So let me check my soldering on this and we'll find out why this particular segment seems to be turned on when it shouldn't be. Okay, so it looks like I got a solder bridge right there. I gotta clear that off. And where is my solder sucker? Let's get that done. Okay, that cleared the bridge. Now I just gotta resolder those two pins and we should be good. Okay, here we go again. Plug in the power and turn it on. That's better. Cycle through the different functions, time checking function, time and colon start flashing. Now these, these colons aren't flashing at all. You know, why would that be? Did I get those in the wrong way after everything I said? Okay, I'm gonna to have to look into that too. Be right back. No, those LEDs are in the right way around. Let's get a meter out and, and check them. Maybe one of them is a, a dud on this side. Okay, we got our Bryman meter here. We got it set up on diode checking mode. So let's, uh, let's check these ones here first. I want to do work. 1.75 and then the other one would be around this way. 1.73. Now I think these ones are the other way around. 2.5. 1.7. So with this one here, that is a uh, 2.5, but it's it's uh, not the right way it's, because it's reversed from this one. So it shouldn't be conducting this way at all. And this way it should conduct at 1.7. So let's see if we have another one of those. All right, we do. So let's pull that one out and uh, replace it. Let's see what happens. All right, we got that one out. Now yeah, let's put uh, this one in. Okay. 
And I just want you to measure 1.7 around this way, where it was measuring open before. 1.7. Confidence is high. Let's uh, hook it all up again. All right, that's better. So, one mistake I made, one mistake they made, and it looks like we're getting closer to getting this working properly. So that's the time function, and then this one would be the time checking function. The time and colon start flashing after the press of S3 for a short time. Okay, let's go on to the stopwatch function then. Press S3 four times, display shows 0000. zero, zero, zero. And this zero is not showing up for some reason. So we've got to figure out why we're not getting this one lighting up here. So let me take it under the magnifying glass again. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'd, I forgot to turn on the camera for that repair. So what it was, was a uh, not too great solder joint right there on this resistor here coming down from Q6. So Q6 here, this resistor right there, R7, this end of R7 wasn't soldered. I don't know what, I, I guess I skipped over it, I, but I cut the lead. So I, I uh, just soldered that joint and uh, now things seem to be working a little bit better. So where were we with our investigation of the different, uh, we were at the stopwatch function. So if we press this four times, now we should have a stopwatch. And show zero, 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 colon, stay lit. It starts clocking stopwatch after pressing S2. Oh, so it's, yeah, that's, that's nice. Press two one more time, the clocking will end. And press S1 to reset the stopwatch. It does seem to be working. A uh, counter function, press S3 five times. So that's from power on, we're already there. So we just press it one more time. The play will show zero, 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 it does. And the colons are off, and they are. And press S2 to add one to the counter. So we just keep counting things by pressing, and then press S1 to clear the counter. Okay, that works. So now let's go back to the time function, which I guess is this. And now we'll set the time. Now we want to set it up. I want to set it up for the alarm. We're going to set up the alarm for 140. So we'll set this up at 137. Okay. And then the alarm function. So we press one more, go into the alarm function. Then we set that one up for 140. So now when it gets to 140, we should hear that beeper going off. I'll speed up through this. Okay, we're coming up to the point where it should start beeping. Now, does it beep forever or does it stop after a certain length of time? It seems to just keep going on beeping. Is there a way to stop it from beeping? A few moments later. Okay, now let's see if I press this for two seconds. No, that doesn't shut it up. So the only way to shut it up is to go into alarm mode and change the time or disable the alarm there. And press this for two seconds, let go, should be back to time mode. Okay, well that's it. It's now finally working after I made two boo-boos and they gave me a bad component. We fixed all those. I think it's going to have uh, limited use for my uh, purposes, but uh, somebody else might get a lot of use out of this. Like if. Uh, anybody still doing photography? This would make uh, a fairly decent little darkroom timer, I'm guessing. And uh, it's just to switch it on, set the time, switch it off, that sort of thing. I don't think I'll be using it. It was a nice build. I enjoyed building it. It was it was real easy to build. And uh, even though I did make a couple of mistakes, I'm quite happy with how it came out. And if I do find a use for it, I'll certainly let you guys know. I'll do a project around it of some sort. Anyway, thanks for joining me today, guys. I really appreciate you coming out. Uh, let me know what you think of this thing in the comments, what it could possibly be used for. You know, one of the things is it needs a power supply. It's drawing, uh, you know, sitting here like this, it's drawing 30 milliamps with the alarm going, it can get up over 45 milliamps. So it's not really gonna be a, a useful battery to power device. You could have a, a standby battery in it that would probably power it for several hours if the power went out, but it's definitely something you're gonna to have to have plugged in. 
Anyway, we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.